My wife Megan is a nutritionist, and she's a really good one, by the way. Her weight loss clients consistently lose weight, and her sport performance clients are able to train and perform at a higher level when they're eating on plan. As part of her job, Megan asks her clients to weigh themselves regularly as one measure of their progress toward their goal. That means that it's important that her clients have a scale at home that is accurate. Because without an accurate scale, reliability isn't possible. If her clients step on and off a scale repeatedly, and each time they get a different weight, one time it reads 120, then 142, then 105, then 132, that obviously means that their scale isn't very accurate, and the scale doesn't provide a reliable measure of weight or progress toward their goal. Reliability means that under the same conditions, the measurement of length, height, weight, speed, volume, conductance, viscosity, or whatever else is being measured should give the same answer each time the measure is taken. So if you put a 45 pound weight on a scale, the scale should read 45 pounds every time. And if you measure the length of a bed frame that's 72 inches, the tape measure should read 72 inches each time. And if you measure the volume of a home theater system, the decibel meter should read 105 decibels each time a certain song is played at a certain volume. To get a reliable measure, the measurement must be taken under the same conditions. If you measure the volume of your home theater using different songs, or when holding the decibel meter in a different part of the room, you'll get a different answer, an unreliable result. Likewise, if you weigh yourself with keys and a cell phone in your pocket and weigh yourself the next day just as you're getting out of the shower, these two measurements aren't comparable. The measurements are taken under two different sets of circumstances and they don't provide a reliable measure of progress toward the goal. Megan's clients are obviously smart enough to know that they need to weigh themselves in the same way each time. For instance, weighing themselves in a bath towel or weighing themselves fully clothed. But to make sure they get a reliable measure, Megan has them weigh themselves at a consistent time each day. Most of her clients don't come to her knowing why this is so important. But if you want to understand why this is critical, try weighing yourself first thing in the morning and weigh yourself after lunch and weigh yourself again just before you go to bed. If your scale is accurate, you will see that your weight fluctuates quite a bit throughout the day. For an average person, their weight might fluctuate three to five pounds throughout the day due to food intake, water retention, perspiration, and so on. So a person might get unnecessarily discouraged if they see progress toward their weight loss goal when they weigh themselves on Monday morning, but find they actually weigh more the following day when they weigh themselves on Tuesday evening. So Megan teaches them how to get a reliable measure of their weight and she helps them put their perceived setbacks in perspective. For example, women tend to retain more weight at certain times of the month, and both men and women tend to weigh more when they're retaining water due to an increased sodium intake or due to irregularity. For these reasons, a single measure matters less than the trend line over weeks or months. And for some clients, even if they are able to get a reliable measure of their weight each day, these measures may not be as valid a measure of their progress toward their goals. Validity means that a measure actually measures what it seeks to measure. If client A's goal is to slim down by reducing body fat, then body weight is a fairly reliable measure. All else equal, as body fat decreases, body weight necessarily decreases. But if client B is trying to get ripped by building muscle mass while reducing body fat, and if client B is lifting weights in addition to adjusting their diet, all else is not equal. Because as reductions in body fat decrease the client's weight, increases in muscle mass increase the client's weight. So body weight is still relevant, but it's not as valid a measure of client B's goal of getting ripped. And the reliability of weight loss as a measure of getting ripped 
is compromised even further if the client were using a supplement like creatine monohydrate, which would cause client B to retain water, thereby increasing their weight and thereby offsetting weight decreases from reduced body fat even further. So body weight is a more valid measure of client A's success than client B's success. If their scales are accurate, they will provide for both client A and client B a reliable measure of body weight. But the client's goals, whether they're interested in slimming down or bulking up, determine how valid of a measure their bathroom scale provides of their progress toward their goals.